Well, good morning. It's Sunday, October 24, 2021, and welcome to Comes Out Loud, the bear podcast of indeterminate length, episode number 622. Yeah. Uh, This makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea, I just serve it. And everything is out of order. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, what was that? (laughs) I don't know if you can see my face, Gary. I I did. (laughs) I forgot to tell you, by the way, the intro music is different. (laughs) <laughs> it's in a different order because the show is completely in a different order hi welcome to the show uh for those of you that aren't patrons um things unexpectedly took a twist this morning uh we're doing an early morning show so ta-da! here we are so yeah so that hey makes... gary <laughs> what's, what's the what's the what's the topic for the show today um well we're doing let's talk about sex only it's Ooh. horror story Um, because it's spoopy season and there are urban legends um, that kind of put fear into the hearts of people uh, when they think about being intimate with other folks Um, Mm -hmm. and I think you and I might have some personal stories uh, (laughs) that could be used as lessons to the audience about um maybe making different decisions and i also want to talk a little bit about um the natural fears i think that come with sex uh fair as as a piece of that so um sure why don't we start with that part first so i want to say this before i became a active individual um with other people i had a lot of preconceived notions and Mm -hmm. was concerned about Honestly, I was very much uh, internally focused uh, inappropriately about being a bad partner, like Mm. being unskilled, being unexperienced, um, doing the wrong thing. So I kind of obsessed like about how I was going to be with another person Um, because I didn't want to be a bad lay. I guess. Mm. does that make sense like i was scared it makes so much sense of other people being like you yeah, don't know what he's doing uh <laughs> you know um and so uh, i think i spent a little too much time doing that um although i will say <laughs> Thank you very much. I've not really had any complaints to my knowledge, so <laughs> maybe that worked out in my favor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, I've not had any complaints. Well, good for you. Well, uh, <laughs> I will say, just last uh, evening, I was um, chatting with some folks on a on a like um, Discord Twitch stream, and I kind of made a comment. I was like, "Well, you know, uh, my skills have not necessarily uh, failed me, so I think yeah. that that." Was- is yeah. commendable anyways at least i've been told so yeah and i kind of i can feel that in some ways mm-hmm. um um somewhat similar but you know in a from a different background you know um when you grow up in a somewhat religious family um a lot of stuff gets repressed <laughs> like a lot of stuff <laughs> um so you when you approach situations especially sexual where no one's really talking about sex even even if you're um heterosexual like you may still have those misconcerns or misconceptions about what you can and can't do because you don't really know what's going to happen Mm -hmm. depending on you know what you did i mean i will admit i was lucky um ish um um you had like all the like clinical sexual conversations because of like family life and all those um, um, sex education type classes and seminars and what have you that you had, like we had growing up. And so you knew some things, but you didn't know everything because you didn't know what, how to do certain things. You just kind of knew what happened. Mm -hmm. Um, And then to add on to that, like you got the, you got the experience from a heterosexual perspective um, and when you are homosexual or bisexual or pansexual, 
um, what have you, then you're, um, it changes. You don't really know. And you are left kind of adrift in regards to what you can do. Uh, now, again, lucky, quote unquote, um, I have been playing around since middle school, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. oh, Damon were, experienced, yeah. apparently. Yeah. Huh? I said Damon was, was experienced, apparently. Yeah. I um didn't begin my uh, sexual experiences until my sophomore year of college. Mm. So I was, well, I don't want to yeah. say a late bloomer, but mm-hmm. I, I missed well, the like, entire like teen experimenting. Mm-hmm. I use air quotes with experimenting because isn't all sex experimenting theoretically Mm -hmm. um so yeah like i i waited until i was a full-grown adult and even then like i was scared Mm -hmm. with this about and i what it's gonna be like yeah like i had i had experiences in middle school i had a you know for lack of a better phrase i had a playmate um that lived not too far from me and we messed around like we did the whole kid like experimenting as you're talking about and doing stuff and we knew i mean you know what you're doing so um but then after that when i moved away from him um for high school for four years i did nothing Mm. so and then i went to college and then did everything (laughs) well not everything well well well. that's that's a that's a exaggeration but i did a lot um met a lot of people but i realized that a lot of that had to do with the fact that i was re- you know i was repressed for four years if not more um while i was in high school and didn't get opportunity to do anything and so when i was away and able to um ex- see and experience and talk with other like-minded individuals or other gay men um or bisexual men or whatever closeted men because it was college right. um i reawoken and boy did i have fun um they tell you college is the time for experiences and experiments and what have you and boy howdy did i (laughs) as we used to say oh somebody was busy sowing their oats huh Mm. um yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so I, i think the messaging from our society now to be fair uh, Damon, you and I are of the same generation, and mm-hmm. we came about during the AIDS uh, epidemic mm-hmm. crisis. So when we were going to college, we were really seeing like the height of that moment in which mm-hmm. literally thousands of people are dying. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had been drilled through the 80s with certain messaging campaigns, don't do drugs, um sex can kill like Mm -hmm. you know and and it really kind of has an impact on you like i got goosebumps now just saying those words because that was some of the messaging that we got and like you were mentioning there were so many messages coming at us if you come from a faith-based background Mm -hmm. i don't know of hardly any except for those that um people might refer to as like earthbound or some of the oldest uh natural like spiritualities like if you're wiccan or pagan something along yeah. those lines in which um sex and procreation is a part of the natural life cycle and it's sort of celebrated if that isn't it then that's a whole other experience to try to measure because like even though i wasn't really raised in faith sex was meant yeah. to propagate the species i mean it wasn't mm-hmm. said that way it was just you know you only had sex for conception to have a baby and that was Mm -hmm. it and everything else was a sin um Mm -hmm. and even if you're like asexual like and you're not really a person who so to speak um you know that that's a part of your thing i can still imagine how scary that can be as far as messaging because you're like this isn't me like i can't relate to this um Mm -hmm. and so it doesn't matter kind of what your interests are you know just going through a process of discovery in and of itself can be unnerving agreed and and uncomfortable so i kind of wanted to mention that as a part of this episode just to say i think it's normal i think it's typical to be scared to be unsure and it doesn't matter what it is like even if you're Mm -hmm. a person who's had a whole bunch of experiences 
any new experience can mm-hmm. be discomforting, can be unnerving. Um, yeah. like I think of kink. Mm-hmm. You know, the experiences that I've had, I'm very blessed that they were a positive one. But each one of them, I was uncomfortable. I was a little unnerved. Like, this is yeah. a new arena. This isn't something I've done before. Um, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be sex. Like, I think of the first time I went to Claw as a big leather event. And I was like, this is not my home base. Like, I consider the bear community my tribe. And to be in a space where, you know, um, there's a lot of uh, hyper presentation um on the outside yet even though i know like they're all just human beings they're all just people some of them are big like sissies uh <laughs> you know and, and, <laughs> like and that's not meant to be disparaging no no i yeah i agree um absolutely like um as someone who i don't want i don't even want to say recently because i've been with the letter community for quite some time now mm-hmm. but i agree with you 100 percent. like those every new kink every new thing that you experience either personally are just through for lack of a better phrase like voyeuristic means like you're watching something or seeing someone doing things it's it can be you know it can make you uncomfortable it can make you feel odd and you can but it might also make you feel you know good it might make you be like oh wow that's 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 a door that has been opened (laughs) um a new something that might be of um interest for you for later on you might want to pack that in a in a little, you know, or write that down as a note to like keep for later for maybe next time when you're with someone, you know, those kind of things. Right. Um, but it can be scary, um, especially if you're uncertain um, and exploring kinks and what have you. Um, the good thing for those who don't know um, is that usually depending, hopefully with the safety and the consent person um you have an out if things are getting to be too much or you're not really into it you can you have safe words you have you know red yellow green you have um protocols in place that will allow you to explore within your limits correct so and and there are some what what i think some people will call extremes of mm -hmm sex and intimacy so like i think of certain things in in the kink bdsm arena that people may think are very scary so like um i can't remember what episode it was but we did one i'm pretty sure where we talked about uh blood play Mm -hmm. um and piercing um cupping uh like you know those are in my opinion on one distinct end of like the kink spectrum uh those are not things that i would think of people getting into uh not only as an interest but also just in terms of an experience like when you're starting to to learn about kink but those can be very unnerving or scary uh situations to other people and even i have to admit when i farted like started (laughs) learning about (laughs) when i started learning about kink some of that imagery was what came to mind um you know bondage is one thing but like what happens to a person during a time you know uh having impact play where there's blood um you know bruising i mean like you know that can that can really seem unnerving to somebody who isn't aware of all the circumstances that go in it and i appreciate you for talking about like the scene should have safety aspects to it and it's obviously, I say obviously, it should be consensual. Like, you know, it should be uh, safe. There should be, um, you know, uh, respect between all parties that are involved. Those type of things. Which kind so. of leads to these urban legend things. Um, I didn't research them, but there have been a couple newsworthy items that have happened. I want to say in the past 10 to 15, maybe 20 years, Mm -hmm. where it makes the news, unfortunately, that there's a scene and things go wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, uh, not to kind of freak anybody out. And my apologies if anything we discuss in this episode is triggering. That is not our intention. Um, But there have been BDSM kink-like scenarios where things go horribly wrong. Um, Mm -hmm. 
and I don't know all the facts of anything, so that's why I don't think I looked them up. And and this isn't meant to like spread more rumor, mm-hmm. um, but it is possible in a moment that things could go badly. Um, yeah, there's stories of where equipment failed, like the sling doesn't support the person, um, but they mm-hmm. were also doing suspension at the moment or mm-hmm. uh, like CBT, um, cotton mm-hmm. ball torture. Uh, you know, there were just things that happened and then, you know, there's um, some physical damage. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And yeah. Uh, like, you know, persons having a heart attack during a moment, um, mm-hmm. you know, electric uh, play that goes wrong. So. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And to I mean, I know this is let's talk about sex, but we can kind of go into it. Let's talk about kink in a sense. Right. Um, so one of the things that one of the big overarching like things with regards to kink play is something called a uh, rack mm-hmm. and something called um, SSC. So rack is risk aware, consensual kink and SSC is safe, sane and consensual. Um, there are two kind of blanket terms um, to where with rack in particular, going into something that is very risky, very, you are understanding that you are consenting to these things that something could potentially go wrong. Um, and you understand that risk, you're taking that risk yourself. Um, now you're, you should be, you're doing this again, consensually. That's why it's, um, rack as opposed to just R A K. Um, um, and then safe saying consensual is sort of the milder term on that. It's where you're agreeing to do something as long as it's safe and sane and you're both consenting to it. Um, and, um, again, as Gary was mentioning, stuff can happen. Things can happen. Things can go wrong. Equipment can fail. Um, human error, you know, it, it's, it's there. And, um, hopefully those who are involved or engaged are equipped are AR and are able to handle something that goes wrong. Um, and can quelch, you know, squash the situation or get the assistance that they need to hopefully make something um, that could be worse, not as bad. But sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes that can happen. Um, right. Sometimes uh, you, it, it happens so suddenly that you can't, there's nothing, there's no time to, you know, to stop something. Um, uh, but, you know, part of a lot of the training and education in regards to some of these kinks and kink plays are talking about safety right. and things that you can do to hopefully prevent things from happening. But all of that prevention can go out the window when just something just happens, something unexpected. Correct. And even outside of kink, like both you and I, I'm thinking, and you might know who this is. We are friends slash acquaintances with a person who outside of the kink scene was having sex with their partner. And unfortunately their partner had a heart attack while mm-hmm. they were having sex and unfortunately passed away. Mm-hmm. And that in and of itself can be very unnerving and scary, mm-hmm. especially if you don't know or expect that to happen. And the reason I say it that way is if the person has a known health condition, you may take on some risk in that time, in that moment, knowing that there's a possibility mm-hmm. that, you know, this could be strenuous to them and maybe not, you know, uh, necessarily the thing to do. But, you know, human beings are human beings and they're going to do yeah. what they want to do. And so, you know, we've talked over the years in different episodes about like safety protocols, just in general, like, for example, um, ED, erectile dysfunction medications. Um, when you take, you know, uh, we know them by the brand name Cialis, Viagra, and, mm-hmm. you know, when you take these um, blood pressure altering medications that have different effects, you know, we've talked about priapism. If you have an erection for four or more hours, please seek medical help. You know, you basically have to go to the ER. And if you can't mm-hmm. get your erection to go down, then the spongy tissue in the penis has to have blood taken out of it. That's all I'm going to say about that. Mm-hmm. So (laughs) there's lots of things that can be very scary, if not horrifying, you know, Mm -hmm. 
what happens. I mean, you know, and then there's this kind of speaking of horror, there's the typical, you know, like um, someone wasn't clean. Uh, by clean, mm-hmm. I mean like they didn't prepare or fully prepare ahead of time. I was listening yeah. to a podcast recently and it was making me kind of laugh. Um, this isn't a laughing matter, but you know, uh, someone who's inexperienced and doesn't understand how douching works, like, you know, as far as like doing an enema, um, the horror story, quote unquote, was that the person, um, you know, used a store bought enema, but didn't oh. really pay attention to the directions. So they didn't understand what evacuating was supposed to be. Oh dear. Right. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it's kind of like the laws of physics, here on the planet, oh, no. here on the planet Earth, what goes up must come down, and when it comes mm. to the body, baby, whatever goes in must come out. Must come out. So, like, and that's just the general way that things work. <laughs> so, oh dear! Right. I shouldn't laugh. Right, 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 right. No, no, no. Because in the moment, you would be horrified whether uh-huh. you are giving or receiving, not the experience you wanted. Yeah. Did I don't think not consent that. to that. <laughs> did not want that. No. Probably, probably, oh. most likely did not. Did not. Yes. No. 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 Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the um, you know, overall, um, again, um, you know, sex being what it is, we all know it's 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 there's there's always always risk involved. So, you know, you, you are making decisions for you, whether you're agreeing to participate or not. And as we talked, I kind of, we talked about in consent before, but like one of the things I will say is like, you're, you always have an out. And if something is going on that you are horrified by, as we go into this story, <laughs> um, by all means, tap out, like take your ball and go home. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> or take 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 the family jewels, baby. Get mm-hmm. get out. So th- I think that's a great segue. It lead it. Um. So David and I are going to tell a story or two each mm-hmm. about our personal experiences. Um. I think we've alluded to them before. We may have told the story. We've been doing this a long time, y'all. And if yeah. you were to the show, then this will be your first time. Um, yeah. Hearing these kind of experiences. What Damon's talking about is the thing to remember for the future. That we in our past may have not known in that moment that mm-hmm. you, unless you are uh, consensually restrained, I guess I'll put it that way, mm-hmm. you have the power, the control, the ability to GTFO like a mm-hmm. motherfucker. Like you could tap out, you can change. Like when we talk about rape and consent, like it's all the same thing. You no. can change your mind at any moment. You can be like, yeah. "Nope, not for me." Time to go. Like mm-hmm. this is this is. I you don't can, you feel can, okay in this moment. Honest, and I will say this, and then honest to God, you can literally be in the middle of something mm-hmm. and be like, "No, no, no." Now I will say this: in my personal I mean, experience, I don't want to speak for you, Damon. Sometimes. The desire for the D <laughs> is so strong, it outweighs all rational thought, all normality. Like, safety be damned. You were like, baby, like, I want that nut, or I need to nut. Like, and, like, I'm going to make this happen. Damn the environment. Damn God the damn it, I'm going to make this fucking, I'm going to make this happen. Just push through. And then, you know, move on later. Take the shower later. Do whatever you need to do later. Just, 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 we're getting this going, and then we're going to move on. My favorite like, part yep. of that just now, for those of you that aren't watching us like in video, <laughs> David had his eyes closed the entire time, which is telling me that he is having a, like, memory moment uh-huh. about, like, where he was, like, cannot look, cannot watch, cannot see. Just, like, you know, uh-huh. you were just like I, I cannot be here. I need to be somewhere else in my mind. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and don't say you haven't been there. Don't you dare. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not talking about you. No, I'm just okay. saying. I'm saying to the audience. <laughs> like somewhere, sometime in your past, you have been there where you've been like, no, just close your eyes. Just right. close your eyes and think of something else. 
which yes. to be fair like we're not really going to get into it although we might want to talk to, to ed about this in a future um uh landscape of relationships trauma that's baby that's what that's about like when you True. when you need to remove yourself from the moment and yet be in the moment that most likely is a coping mechanism of a, of a traumatic experience in that moment and right. that's gets right. really really murky because there's a part mm-hmm. of your body there's a part of your mind that is like warning warning <laughs> like this yeah. is probably not a good environment yeah. this is not safe yeah. like very 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 scared and yet at the same time there's another part of you i want to say probably the more animalistic like aspect that is in a tug of war if not overriding you know because there's the pleasure pain pain you know situation where you're just like you know you really want to have that mm, um you know or a series of them or whatever so yeah mm-hmm. that being said um David, do you is there a particular uh, idea that you have in mind or a story that you want to oh god share as uh, an, an experience so many <laughs> oh okay this is not a bragging session let's be serious i know <laughs> i know well we'll go into kind of like the push through cuz you 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 want to get the nut or get a nut whatever so um i've talked about this before on the show. I know I've I've mentioned this story before. Um, so when I was young, dumb, and full of cum in in college, um, as I mentioned earlier in this show, like I I had a lot of fun while I was in college. Um, sometimes too much, and this is kind of one of those weird little stories. Um, so I was home um, after like summer break or what have you. And I was chatting online and I met this guy um, and he seemed very interested in meeting up. And, you know, I was very much about like playing around because that's what, you know, I was probably somewhere between 18 and 21, if not 22. So very young. So, gosh, God damn it. So many. I'm turning 42. I'm I'm turning 42 tomorrow. So if that gives you a good idea of where things are going. So, yeah. So we're talking about um, half a lifetime ago. I know, right? <laughs> okay. So many hormones, like so many hormones. So so much so much desire, so much need to to, you know, do that thing. Just, yeah. So, um I agree to meet up with this person. Mm-hmm. Um and so I never like I wasn't a big fan of having people come to the house cuz, you know, my mom lives there. My sister was there. Um, so I was like, let's meet up at the McDonald's up the street. It's cool. So I walked my happy little ass up there um, to the McDonald's to meet up with this guy. And I get there and we meet up. And so this was like 99, like I, I went to college 98 to 2002. So if you want to get like a range. So we're talking like, again, 20 plus years ago, internet was a thing, but it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't as high definition as it was now. Um, And people could get away with a lot of shit um, back then. So like pictures. Um, This guy did not look like his picture at all. (laughs) Like, um, okay, okay. Are we talking like their picture was stolen from like like a magazine or something? Not quite like... that. Not quite that. But just okay. like older. So maybe they took a picture. Oh. That they had. Like a Polaroid from the eighties. Like, yeah, something like that. <laughs> something like that. Something. Um, but he did not look like he you know looked in the picture. Um, but again, I'm I'm, I'm going to caveat this with I was like. 1920, 21, like, <laughs> but okay, he was okay, kind of nerdy looking, um, and we met up, and he was kind of like, you know, I was, like, I had thought, again, that we were going to go, like, we were going to get in his car, and we are going to drive somewhere, and then we would go and have fun and then he'd drive me back and then we'd be done. That was kind of, I thought what we had talked about, but again, I don't recall the conversation. It's been some time. Um, and you were horny. 
And I was horny. And I say yeah. that because, baby, there are times where your brain just shuts down. Mm-hmm. Like, logic exactly. goes out the window. Out the window. <laughs> And, yep. you, and all, you are just all, all, forms of logic. all horn. That's it. All just wanting to do something. Yeah. So we go in. He says, like, we're just going to do it kind of here. And we go into the bathroom at the McDonald's. Now, this is. I wish I could remember, but I feel like it was midday. Um, if not early evening. Um, in like. A McDonald's in Kentucky in the 90s, 2000s, like early 2000s. Okay. So. And what time of day was this? I want to say, like, again, like I said, I want to say it was like mid-afternoon, early evening. Okay. So not lunch rush and not necessarily dinner? Yeah. Okay. So kind of like, it wasn't busy. Right, right. That's like that. in case the audience is wondering, like, hey, what the fuck time does it matter? It does because maybe if there was a rush in the restaurant, like lots mm-hmm. of people. That that's where yeah. my mind is going with this. Yeah, story. but there were still people. Okay, it was still people. It was still like not just the. It wasn't like a like a dull. Like it wasn't like a real low. Like nothing's happening. It was still like the you know. Right. There was a there was a you know there was drive through. There were people coming in and out. Like it was, it was. So it just not, probably wasn't as busy, right? It's not a ghost town, dead. Yeah. So it's not like you know, there's just a skeleton crew and only like two people, you know, work in the kitchen and nobody yeah. in the place. You know, it's, yeah. It's it, you know, there's yeah. So, so we go to the bathroom and we go into the stall. Now, this is a, this is not a single use bathroom. Okay. Okay. So there is a, I mean, it technically could have been, but I don't recall there being a lock on the door. So. Probably not. Yeah. So there was a urinal and there was a stall. Okay. And a sink. And, you know, like it was a decent, like, smaller size bathroom. Right. You know. So we are in the stall. Mm -hmm. And we are going at it. Now, uh, I will own. because of the lack of looks, um, I was very much not into like doing much regarding face to face because he was not that pretty. Um, so there mm-hmm. weren't, no, there was no like making out, but he was, he was talented in regards to, um, orally giving. Okay. So yeah. Now again, horny teenager, McDonald's bathroom. Right. Going at it. He's, doing a really good job on what he's doing and he's like i want to just you know he's gonna turn around and i'm supposed to fuck him um so remember how earlier we were talking about preparation there wasn't any (laughs) (laughs) okay uh, pause before you continue and we get into brown hanky territory i think I do want to say this. Sorry. <laughs> Don't mean to make you spit take. So mm-hmm. I do want to say this. The variety of individuals that's out there and their uh, bodies is quite a lot. It is completely possible to have anal and not really have a negative outcome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If a person has a certain kind of diet, if they know their body well, like yeah. you do not. And more importantly, when it comes to preparation, ooh, we should probably really do a show on this if we haven't uh, in quite some time. There are different types of preparation. And so mm-hmm. there is like, baby, like I am it, like I, I am just cleansing everything <laughs> inside of me out. And then there is just like a little prep which is kind of what you probably need most of the time. Mm -hmm. So just kind of keep that in mind. Like we are, while we're, while we, while, while David's telling a horror story, I don't want people to walk away and think like every time you have anal play without quote unquote preparation, without cleaning, so to speak, that it's going to be a bad scene. That is definitely not the case. And I want people to know that, especially because do you know how many, online posts stories porns like Mm -hmm. so many things give us a false impression that everybody is just 
whistle clean have ever, like, all like, the time. Any any fucking porn where like it's stranger or straight guy that gets fucked, suddenly they're like clean as a whistle. Come on. Come on. Right, 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 Come. right. But on the flip side of it, it is not a, a, a 180 opposite. It is sure. not to expect if there's no cleaning or prep that there's going to be dingleberries and it's going to be a disaster. <laughs> like, <laughs> you did not just fucking use the word dingleberries. Sorry. <laughs> you know, Go ahead. it is quite possible that a person naturally is relatively okay, yeah. you know? Yeah. That and, being said. <laughs> and, and for the most part, most people are usually generally okay. Like you just you just depending on what you're doing. You right. yeah. Anyway, so back to okay, the story. So, back to the story. So and as I mentioned, not prepared. Oh and um so we're going, I mean, I again I hadn't this is none of this had been planned. None of this was what we were about to do. So we're doing it and I do it anyway, because I'm a teenager and my dick is hard. So Right. You're like, <laughs> this is going somewhere. Yes. It's gonna happen, right? Like so, this is a this is a trade that does not stop until yeah. it reaches till, the end. So all until all all passengers have been successfully <laughs> removed. <laughs> <laughs> like, this, 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 this. Baby, like this, yeah. This this trade ride doesn't come to an end until literally someone comes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So <sighs> I finish. Despite all, like, like I'm, I, I, like I talk about it, and I'm realizing, like, I, you know, I intentionally closed my eyes. Yeah, eyes were closed because, again, McDonald's bathroom. Now, had people come in, absolutely, at least twice, because I was keeping track in my mind, um, because I was trying to be as quiet as fuck, because I don't like he, I don't know where he lives, right, right, but I live right over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's some added risk. Mm-hmm. I mean, did you know, I'm, I was, my okay, previous story. So my mother had just bought the house right before I started college. So I hadn't lived there very much. Okay. So probably didn't know a lot of people. So I didn't have that issue potentially. So it may be okay. But still. I lived very close, and if you've seen pictures of me and my mother, I look very much like my mother. So, well, maybe not only that. Like, I mean, this is what the nineties, nineties, two thousands. Yeah, right, right, right. 2000s. So we're talking like twenty some years ago, and not that it isn't an issue now, but back then, like the fear of law enforcement was a big mm-hmm. freaking thing. Like, if you got busted, it was indecency and other like you know adult uh you know behaviors yeah. it could be sodomy like mm-hmm. like and it definitely was sodomy so <laughs> i'm thinking <laughs> right i'm thinking of what you'd be charged with and the and the and the bigger thing is like um the really scary factor is is and i don't think it happens too much anymore but i think it still does like that that stuff would be posted like in the news like your name and all your business mm-hmm. would be out there, and it could really have yeah. damaging effects. So, absolutely, yeah. like high oh. amount of risk. Oh, oh yeah. So, um, again, finish. Um, um, he gets off, and um, he gets out. Uh, he like he starts to leave, um, and I'm in there in the bathroom. I mean, nothing looks pretty down there, um, per se. I mean, thank heavens we're in a bathroom. So I grab as much toilet paper as God intended. Okay. <laughs> um, and I'm cleaning myself as much as I can. Um, uh, uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of glad he left because it gave me an opportunity to kind of like mentally process like, oh, fuck, what the fuck just happened? Mm. And I... Um, Clean myself up as best as I can. Um, obviously, wash my hands. Was, yeah. and, and I was just so I have this image in my head, and part of me is like, "Damn, the door doesn't lock." Because part of me is like, "Would I wash my junk in the sink?" As gross as that sounds, do you know what I mean? Like, is that an I option? Mean, because the bathroom doesn't come with wet naps, kids. Like, no. Like you know, the portable, like single individual pack stuff that we have now. 
like doesn't yeah, really it, it did good, not good. exist back then like the closest yeah. thing you could have maybe brought was a package of baby wipes yeah if, and they would have been heavily scented <laughs> yeah so um again clean myself off best i can with toilet paper and what have you wipe and stuff you know is you know um fortunately this i think was a um one of the older uh bathrooms that had like paper towels as opposed to the okay um, air dryer blowers right, air right, right. dryers and it wasn't as bad again it while it was yeah it wasn't as bad but again i didn't really fully clean um because you just can't with all this stuff um and i walk my i have to walk out and i'm literally doing like the worst walk of shame in my mind because if anyone in that restaurant had come into that bathroom they would have, I, I don't think it would have been possible to not know what was going on unless you are that naive. No, but it is possible. In the moment or afterwards? In the moment. Oh, okay. Or even afterwards. Like, I don't know if I you mean, were. maybe al- afterwards. I didn't know if you were alluding to like a smell in the air, like odors, yeah. Yeah. trash, like remnants in the bathroom stall like. <laughs> no, no 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 fortunately it wasn't that bad okay uh fortunately again fortunately it wasn't that bad but it was still mm. um as someone who was you know 20 at the time 20 1920s 20s 20 months whatever like it was pretty fucking mm. so um and i made my way home a lot earlier than i was planning so i had to because at that time i wasn't out to my family right. so i had to kind of talk my way out of like what are you doing home so quickly (laughs) so i i don't remember what i don't even remember what i said but i immediately went like to the our bathroom once i got home and did a thorough cleanse (laughs) as we used to say back in the day a silkwood shower (laughs) (laughs) underwear went in the garbage um like yeah yep 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 Fun time. Oh, hindsight. Oh yeah. I'm gonna have to look this up. Um, <laughs> so I will. I, wanna... s- I will say this. Um, that is probably the upside of us telling these stories for those of you to kind of learn from. Is that even though the experience may be horrifying, humiliating, uh, like you may feel really bad in the moment or uh, have an impression that you can't survive this. We're here to tell you it is not the end of the world. Like, even if things don't go as well, I guess, is what we're going to, like, offer in these stories. It, you know, uh, not to use a trope, like, uh, saying, but it does get better. Mm-hmm. And I think you learn these lessons and then you do better later on. Like, you don't live with such dire, like, outcomes. But, yeah. That, that being a thing. What were you look? What did you want to look up? Because I get this. I was trying to see if I was trying to see if I if I could remember if we when we talked about this before. But I feel like I've had this. I feel like I've talked about it on the show, but we'll see. I think you have. I don't. I remember most of that, so I'm gonna say you did. But to be fair, we've been doing this a long time, y'all. Agreed. Um, like hundreds upon hundreds of episodes. I mean, technically, Jeff's the only one that's been here since the very beginning, but Damon. You and I, probably within a year, will come up on a huge milestone in the number of episodes that we've been doing. Mm-hmm. So uh, for those of you that are newer and have not gone through the entire catalog or uh, we haven't covered it in a flashback episode, then these may be new stories to you. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what about you, Gary? Okay. So. Um, <laughs> all right. I want to give this premise to start off with. I Uh-oh. am not proud of this story. <laughs> but I like the power of 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 the horn, like the I I will just say this, like like a, a a sex fiend demon took over my body. That is the only thing I could probably use it as an explanation for what happened. Because so blame it on otherworldly <laughs> like entities. <laughs> That's what we're blaming it on. Okay. Oh. Okay. 
I take full responsibility of the decisions that I made, but I'm going to say this. I am not proud of this. Like, this is by no means a badge. Um, <laughs> if, you know, like, you know, if I'm in a game and I'm getting, like, recognition and XP and stuff, I don't know if this is worth it. Uh, <laughs> to be fair, nobody died. Uh, mm-hmm. So we have that. Um, yeah. Can't wait to see how this turns out. <laughs> So this is about 20 years ago, because I'm looking at the calendar, and I'm like, okay, 2021. So this would have been about 2001, 2002. I had learned, of, I came out in, in 92, so we're going mm-hmm. almost 30 years uh, I've been out. But I didn't find my tribe, the Bear Community, until 99, uh, the fall mm-hmm. of 99, about this very time of year. Uh, it was between August and October that I like started learning the Bear Community uh, to the point that I was interested and I went to some events, some meetings, some functions. Within about probably two to three years after that, I was in Pittsburgh uh, for a function. It was a bar night, I believe. And I met this gentleman who we had been kind of very interested in each other, but when we'd seen each other out a couple of times. And as bar nights went at the time, uh, the bar that we were at, I believe there wasn't much of a, a play space arena mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. there might have been a back room or a bathroom kind of thing but it wasn't really like uh kind of the space and the time to be able to to meet and you know have have all that kind of fun yeah so that being said bar closes last call y'all lights are gonna come up you know people are gonna scatter like roaches you know and mice like it's just it's 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 that kind of thing where you're like, all right, need to, you know, if 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 you're gonna hook up, baby, you need to make a decision, but you ain't doing it here. Like you gotta mm-hmm. go somewhere else. So this beautiful soul and I, uh, because after this, as as it has uh, turned into most of the time in my life, uh, a lot of the people that I've had sex with, I sort of become friends with. Anyways, it's a topic <laughs> for another show. Talk for a better show. But we, we were aware of each other, but we weren't friends. Like we weren't playmates or anything like that. This was our first experience. And I am from out of town. And I had developed, started developing this habit that I would drive into town and that I would also drive out of town the very same night. I didn't have local places to stay. I did not have um, the dispendable income to afford a overnight accommodation like a hotel. And the person mm. that I was like wanting to you know have fun with did not have personal accommodations to go back to um if i recall correctly at the time i think they were living at home with their parents or their mother Uh, right so mm. that is not an option and we are so horned up for each other like we cannot like we start turning into velcro like we cannot keep (laughs) our hands off each other it is it is all about that you know bring it on uh-huh. so they said me i was like i don't know what we're gonna do i'm like because i don't have a place to stay and i don't really have much in the way of money or whatever um and they said i have an idea and i was like okay and they said there's a place we can go to and i was like what kind of place is this and they're like it's a bathhouse i was like oh okay oh so mm-hmm. this let me think was this the very first bathhouse experience yes that being said i've kind of i think i don't think i've told the entire story of this but i've referenced it before in the past on the podcast i i will say this just because you have a bad experience doesn't mean it will always be like this for the future because baby this (laughs) story of the bathhouse experience was the worst of all that i've ever had and by far should have made me never want to go to one again mama so i can't that, wait that being said so th- i'm like well where are we going because I, I don't know so they're like okay we're gonna go to this place i've never heard of it they're like um it's a certain part of town just follow me so i have my car they have their car we drive through pittsburgh and if you know pittsburgh it's like you know hills and, and all sorts of craziness so mm-hmm. like, we, we eventually end up in this section of town it's not exactly i mean it is not beverly hills baby but it is also not uh, the most dangerous, uncomfortable section. But it is notably kind of an area where you want to make sure you lock your car. Mm. And 
like be in be in the streetlights. Like you don't want to <laughs> just kind of wander, um, especially when it's not your your turf. So I'm with them, and I was like, "Where are we going?" And they're like, "Oh, we're you know going to this place." And I was like, "Right, but where the hell are we? Like we're sort of in a residential area, but it's sort of crossover residential commercial." And again. It's like 2.30, going on 3 o'clock in the morning. We've been drinking. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, like, I am not of the most clear mind at this moment. And And you're horny. Yes. And it's like, I want want the sex, and I need the sex, and I must have it now. So, like, let's just do this thing, whatever we're doing. So we go to this place. And mind you, this is the, what, the um, early 2000s. So we're coming out of the 90s where a lot of gay establishments were not what they are now. There was no pride flag. Like, you know, everything is kind of on the down low. You know, you have to Mm -hmm. know the location and the business. Um, I don't remember there being a secret knock, but like the business was nondescript. So like you go to a door with a light, like you have to do this thing, you buzz to get in. And like, like most bathhouses, as soon as you get in, there's another locked door and you can't go anywhere until you sign pay mm-hmm. that kind of stuff i've been been there so i've actually literally been i think i've been to the pittsburgh back house i think which one you're talking the one you're talking about i think i've been there well the one i'm talking about no longer exists um oh wait maybe not cut cut to the end it burned to the ground <laughs> not that night <laughs> um so it is not club pittsburgh this is an older bathhouse. I can't even remember oh. the name of it. Um, actually, I went searching years ago online for it, and someone did a, a little video documentary on YouTube. I think. God, I wish I could remember oh. the name of it. I, begin, I think it begins with an A. But anyways, um, so we go, we get in. The lighting is super dim. It's difficult to see. We have to pay. The person I'm with agrees to pay for both of us. We're okay. not staying overnight, so. I start learning like at a bathhouse from this experience that like there's typically a membership fee, but then there's also options. Like, do you just want a couple of hours? Do you want to stay overnight? Do you want a locker? Mm. Blah, blah, blah. I don't care about a locker. I don't care about hardly anything because I just want like to have this experience. Like, like I, I want Gary <laughs> wants the D like <laughs> There is going to be a DNA extraction and it's going to happen. Like, so help me no matter what. Um, God damn it. It's going to fucking happen. (laughs) (laughs) But I will say this. The hairs on the back of my neck start getting a little like into a thing, even before we get fully into the building. Because I'm just like, damn, like this place is a little creepy. Like it doesn't Mm -hmm. look the most clean. Mm-hmm. I've never been here before. Like, I'm starting to mm-hmm. question this business. <laughs> so the, the person that I'm with, they pay for both of us. They pay a higher fee instead of just walking with a, a locker, quote unquote. We had the option to use beds in, and I don't remember what they called it at the time. It's kind of like a barracks setup. So there were no private rooms in this establishment. Let me put it that way. Okay. But you could pay a fee, like only so many beds were available and you paid extra and you got a bed in an open room that was yours. Okay. And that's what they paid for. (laughs) So. Okay. We pay the fees. We go inside. I tell them I have never been here before, the person that I'm with. I was like, so I'm relying on you to tell me where we're going and what's happening. Okay. So we start traveling through the building. The building is uh, kind of narrow, but long and tall. So there's a basement level and I think three, like a, a main floor, ground floor, two more floors above it, maybe. Okay. This is a long ass time ago. And the lighting is bad yeah it is haunted house dark Mm. no lie can barely make out faces wherever we walk oh god so uh i'm gonna use an analogy that is completely incorrect because i don't know if this is gonna be right if when i think of this this makes me think of the game silent hill wow like 
creepy AF, super unpleasant, and makes you question life itself. I am following this person. At one point, I grabbed the back of their pants and their belt loop because that's how dark it was. And I was mm. like, I don't know where we're going. I don't know what we're doing. They decide to give me a tour. They have been here before. Great. Of course. It makes me feel a little more comfortable because we get to walk around and see what the place is like. One of the places we first visit is downstairs in the basement, which is where the pool is. We go downstairs. There is a in-ground pool. And baby, it is empty. There is no water. It is dirty. There's some stuff in the bottom. I don't know what it is. I can't remember if it was furniture or what. But like, this is not a functional space. Like, if you've seen Fallout, the game series, and the post-apocalyptic <sighs> world, this is part yes. of what I'm starting to experience. And oh, every Jesus. minute, I am like, what am I doing? Why am I here? <laughs> like, like the hormones are starting to wear off. The alcohol starting to, is starting to wear off. Starting to lose that. Like, like you're like here, like all the way over here. And now you're slowly going backwards to be like, oh, shit. Your, your mind, your mind is getting less foggy. <laughs> your 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 the blood had the blood is leaving the lower regions <laughs> are coming back up to the higher regions. That that's what's happening right now. I think like sanity I, is starting to come back into, into play. That. So <laughs> we end up playing and hooking up in a shower stall in this area. There's only three shower stalls, I think. One of them, none of them are really functional, if I remember correctly. No, I don't think that's right. I think one was completely offline. And was kind of closed. It might mm -hmm. have had tape. I don't quite remember. Mm -hmm. Two mm -hmm. of them, I think, were functional, but were dirty AF. Like, Ooh. should really uh, be, you know, probably Cleanse. not used. Yes. Right. Yeah. Should probably not be used at this time, but whatever. Right. Like, like, mommy dearest, get the Clorox and the bleach. Scrub the shit out of oh, this place. Oh, oh, like, oh. this is desperately oh. needed. Oh, probably black mold i mean just like it is it is not a, a good scenario we oh. play around in the shower stall mind you we are still with our clothes we have not really gotten a locker from what i recall or put our clothes anywhere so mm -hmm. we're not running so you're around just walking towels. around yes we are just yeah. fully clothed walking around and we are not going at it but we are making out passionately in a shower stall with the curtain open like the water is not running or functioning if i recall correctly like i mean you know yeah so you're just you're just you're just like making out because right you found a corner and because like you found a corner <laughs> because i am so freaked out by this environment faceless bodies kind of come past us like checking out i'm not going to say they're ghouls but it is not like maybe it is not that and I am, I mean, I am literally most likely having a traumatic event, like experience <laughs> and just, just, Tunnel right. Trying to Tunnel focus Disney. on the person that I've, you know, am so desperate to, to hook up with. So we screw around for there for a while. Um, I don't think either of us got off, but because of the people, we decided to like continue the tour, like go mm -hmm. around. We ended up on one of the upper levels. This was the part that was the most unnerving. I mean, the basement is like uh, I mean, a scare scene in and of itself. Like, this could totally be yeah. used in a haunt. Absolutely. I mean, fact. We're upstairs, and we're in the room with the beds. I, I use air quotes because I don't even know what I want to call it. Like, Barrett is a good word. I uh, think. Well. Our, our. Yeah. Yeah. So, here's here's the lay of the scene. If you have ever seen older uh, films, I'll put it that way, older video or still pictures from, say, the 20s through to maybe the early 50s, if then, maybe late 40s, of mm -hmm. like a sanitarium or oh. like, do you know what I mean? Where they're like the old, like during the World Wars, where it was- Where you like, had like beds like right next to each other. Uh, Yeah, but it was all like, like no bunk beds, all single yeah. metal frame, Bit. thin mm -hmm. mattress- yeah, 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 yeah. That is this room. 
Oh. But okay. it is dark as fuck. And there uh-huh. is like one red light. Mm-hmm. Literally at the far end of the room. <laughs> and about halfway across the room, I can't even really see this. I'm holding yeah. my hand up in front of my face. I cannot really see that. That's how dark it is in this place. Mm-hmm. So we're in here, and theoretically, we have a bed. I think just a single bed. We are both slightly fluffy boys. Um, you know, it was two decades ago, I was much smaller <laughs> at the time, but still a thick boy. So was the yeah. person I'm hooking up with. Uh, so for both of us to sleep on the bed, if we're even going to sleep on the bed or to do anything, we I would have sleep to on the be... Bed. <laughs> We would Sorry. have to be side by side. Like, we would have to be on our sides. We couldn't even be, like, yeah, you know, like, yeah. on our backs or, or fronts or <laughs> well, whatever. We're a side sleeper. Right. It's, it's <laughs> a single baby. It's not a very big mattress. Yeah. So we're in there. I'm holding on to their, like, pants or their arm or something just, like, to have them with me. We're making out. Mm-hmm. We go to the bed. A, empty bed. Let me put it that way. Because we they're not even assigned. It's not like they're numbered and we're told which one is ours. They're just beds. <laughs> yeah. This is when I discover that these are old metal beds with questionable springs. I'm pretty sure everything in this place is rusty. It is a tetanus infection <laughs> waiting to happen. But I want, I want that, I want that. You want, you want that dick. I you want, want that, that dick. I want that, I want that load, baby. Like I, mm-hmm. I am so messed up in the head. I am like, God damn it. I have, I have journeyed through the, em- like to get to the Emerald City. Like this moment is going to happen no matter what. Like we are. This gonna- is fucking happening. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> So we're making out, you know, we're playing, we're giving each other head, like we're, we're still clothed, but not clothed, like all this stuff is happening. And then I realize we have become the center of attention. Oh. Because it's a bathhouse and uh-huh. you're in a public area and uh-huh. people have kind of sort of gathered around. Some of them are nude some of them are partially clothed i do think a couple of them had towels now that i think about it i think we might have been given towels maybe we just never went that route Mm -hmm. um so while this person and i are having this moment random hands start showing up oh shit i've been there oh god and i am so freaked out that i am like what the fuck is going on who are these people? I don't know what to do. Like, like, and there's a part of me because I've never been in a bathhouse before. I'm like, is this what is expected? Like, are we just open? Like, is this, are, are we the gazelle on the Serengeti and like all of the lion pride shows up and, and has like a piece? Like I, uh, I am, you know, so I am having a crisis of like experience because I don't understand what's happening. And yet at the same time, like I'm getting a little irritated. I start getting territorial. Like I start removing hands because I was like, oh no, this is mine. Like this, this, <laughs> this, this is mine. Like this shit is mine. And like, I'm not talking about my personal body. I'm talking no. about the person that I'm with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, this is mine. So back off. Yeah, it, it, like this is this is this is all about me getting what I want. Mm-hmm. Been there. Been there. Go ahead. So we end up like having having our like release with mm-hmm. each other, despite mm-hmm. the distractions All and the, the other things that are going on. Um, if I recall correctly, we briefly sat, messed around on the bed, and I was like, "This is not happening." Like I didn't say oh. that out loud, but I was like, "I do not trust this bed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust the floor." Like <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like the the floor, like the the slats in the floor will give way if we step in the wrong spot. Like, and you're just gonna just fall through. Just it is it is a haunted house sex experience. That is oh the my god, way I can describe this. <laughs> Needless to say, after the orgasms have been had, mm-hmm. I am like. 
Yep, mind clears. The like, mind fucking clears. Right, right. I am like, I am not feeling as inebriated. I am not feeling as like, you know, uh, clouded in memory or judgment, at least judgment. I am like, now that we've had this experience, uh-huh. I gotta go. Mm-hmm. And this is not what happened, but what I wanted to happen was, this is going to be a, a time reference that may not make sense to people. If you remember Looney Tunes, <laughs> and you remember Witchy Poo, uh huh, how she would disappear from the scene <laughs> with like a, some hairpins, just but, yep, because <laughs> she would just like off off screen, and all that would be left is little like like you're saying like little hairpins just kind of floating and spinning in the air right after her because she left so fast. Like that was how I was feeling. I was like, I need to get I gone. To go. <laughs> like. So I quickly was like, okay, this 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 was thing. Thank you, fund. Let's talk again, some other time, some other place. Not here. Bye bye. <laughs> I take it you went home. I made I made my way out. Got back to my car. Um, this was notably my. This was uh my this has to be my very first car, which was uh, a jalopy kind of. Um, mm-hmm. It was not my brand new car. I don't think. I don't know if I oh, had God. it just yet. Oh, maybe I oh. did. Shit, that was another reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must have had the new car. That was another reason why the neighborhood was so vivid to me because I was like, oh no, about leaving my brand new car here. But so I <laughs> right, get back right, to my right. car. My car is fine. It's not broken too. Thank God. Um, <laughs> and I leave. And now I have to drive over two hours mm-hmm. to get home. It's like what four or five in the morning. It is that point? probably three thirty. Oh, uh, three forty-five. Oh, to start the drive home. Mm-hmm. I may very well have like pulled off on the highway in a rest area and like taken a nap before I got all the way home because this is early on in my back and forth trips to Pittsburgh. So I don't know if I gotten up the stamina and the endurance to like do the whole trip that late at night in one shot. I mean, still, even if you did, like, that's still late. <laughs> it is very late, and I am also notably in the state that I was when I left said scary bathhouse. <laughs> I have not showered. I have not had an opportunity to clean up. Um, the building definitely had a smell to it. I'm pretty oh, sure Jesus people were Christ. able to smoke openly in it, oh. which was another reason why I was so freaked out. I was like, this is a tinderbox waiting to go up. It is an old ass building from the turn of the century. It is wood. It is dilapidated. <laughs> Sections of this building are closed off. The stairs are questionable. The basement is fucked. Like, I need to get out of here. <laughs> the basement is fucked. <laughs> and probably within about five years of that is when it burned. Like, it caught oh. fire and, and burned down. Uh, and that was the end of the business. So, wow. I felt very blessed that I lived through the experience. Um, I haven't dreamed or thought about that place since probably the last time I mentioned it on this uh, podcast. But let me tell you. If, if I was ever to make a horror movie about yeah. a real life experience that isn't horror, but is a hundred percent thriller, like that would be it. This is it. Like it really, like if I was to make a, a, a cautionary tale for personal safety, <laughs> um, which would probably not be relevant now because I'm sure people are like, well, what about a cell phone and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, and, and Okay. I think I yeah. have a cell phone. I'm pretty sure it was a pay by the minute flip phone <laughs> that only did texting and voice calls, no internet. Yeah. So, like, I yeah. was so I I don't even think I could rely on a GPS system. Like, I don't. No. I don't even think I had a portable Garmin mm. to put in my car at the time. I don't. Yeah. Think yet. God. Like, and so, it's weird thinking about that because that's that's some that's the thing. Like I didn't get a cell phone until I moved up here, which was in two thousand two. So like two thousand two thousand three. So like, yeah. And you know, even back that back then, you had like the the flip phones or Nokia's or whatever, the bricks, what have you. You didn't have like phones with GPS, and you didn't have these. You didn't have like smart ass phones that you could literally go anywhere with and be like, I need to go home. Boop, boop. And <laughs> on your way home. Nope. And not only that, there's no way for anybody to know where I was. 
Like I don't think oh, yeah. I I don't think I texted anybody to be like, hey, FYI. Um, <laughs> going to some creepy ass bathhouse. Go, um, right. Going to a going with a stranger to a place <laughs> I've never been before. My body could never be recovered. <laughs> like <laughs> shit can go down. This is the end of my life. Nobody yes. knows. Kind of, kind of freaking. Gosh. Yeah. Can you oh so speaking of horror stories, kids, um, yeah, like back in the day, like if unless you had like texting or like left messages with people or left like told someone where you were going or what you're doing, nobody knew. Like and like, you know, we were talking about me and stuff, like in the closet and everything. I wasn't telling like my mom. Right. Like, hey, um, I'm going up the street to the black bottles to go meet a guy. Nope. Totally was doing it. Wild abandoned. Fuck all the rules. Whatever. Like, um, I, well, no, that's not necessarily true. So, hi, everybody. So, what I used to do often is write stuff down on, like, somewhere. Like, on a piece of paper, something, so that it was somewhere in my room. Mm, okay. Like, uh, it, it nothing. sometimes it was nothing more than, like, their screen name. Maybe an email address, maybe a phone number if I got one. That was it. Yeah. And sometimes like age and height and weight and eye color and hair color. Like there was, yeah. And, and speaking of such things, probably a handful of years ago, less than five, I actually created a Google shared spreadsheet doc. Um, and here's why. I shared it with a couple of close confidants. To be like, hey, I'm going to have an, an Anon hookup. Here's the info. Just as a precautionary FYI to trusted mm -hmm, people, mm -hmm. like, if y'all don't hear from me, or I kind of disappear, this is the last known whatever. And the reason the I did one. it was because, um, it's been a while, to be fair, uh, but it's still, it's, it's precaution that I think people should be aware of and take today. Yeah. Having a hookup on an app with another person is not secure. It is not safe. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, especially if you do not know the person and they are anonymous, they are a stranger, even if there are pictures um, and you have a screen name or that kind of stuff. Yeah. They could be catfishing. Um, we've mm -hmm. unfortunately heard bad stories of people who, you know, have had uh, very severe outcomes up to and including uh, not surviving. Um, and mm -hmm. while those are rare and extreme, it's something to be aware of when it comes to these kind of, uh, things that you want to take those necessary steps to, to be cautious when it comes to that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. hold that thought. I will. <laughs> I really got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like as an experience, you know, when you're going to go out and you're going to be with other people, especially when you don't know them, like, uh, like I'm saying, like I shared information with other people, but instead of like sending them, I think just a text, I went to the point of saying like, here's the date, here's the time, here's the approximate place, uh, of where we're going to be meeting or whatever. Here's their screen name. Like here's, uh, the method of meeting them. Um, and the reason I went to these measures was because I felt it was best for my personal safety as a backup method. Um, is it a lot of extra steps? Absolutely. And I'm not saying everybody should do what I did, but I felt at the time that I wasn't sure of who I was going to be meeting and what's going to happen. So I think everyone should take that kind of caution for themselves on the who, what, where, when. Um, Mm -hmm. And when you do these kind of things, you know, if you want to let other folks know, I think actually it's very much an adult responsible action to be like, hey, uh, go in to, you know, have some fun, whatever, going to be meeting up with someone, don't really know them. Like, here's, you know, some details, that kind of thing, just in case. Because I think the very rare circumstances where something does happen and things don't work out or go badly, um, th the best thing is the sooner people know, like, haven't heard from you in an hour or two, like, they can kind of check in as opposed to 
half a day, a whole day, yeah. multiple days have gone by. Do you know what I mean? And if there was yeah. really a, a personal safety concern, um, you know, that something happened, that potentially the person was kidnapped or harmed or whatever, uh, it, it just shortens the whole time frame to do that. And this is, I think, just kind of as a cautionary uh, thing for everybody. It doesn't matter what the circumstance is. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could do this no matter what it is. Like if you go to an event it's at a yeah. hotel and you're going to be, you know, meeting up with someone else. I don't think it's all that big a deal to let other people know. Like you're not, you're not broadcasting, you're not bragging, you know. Yeah, yeah. But you can at least say to some folks and be like, hey, I'm going to, you know, go to room such and such or whatever, just in case y'all don't hear from me for a bit or something. Yeah. Um, if you need me, don't. Um <laughs> 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 but if you don't hear from me or I seem to disappear. Yeah. Maybe check me out. Check things out. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Um, yeah. Absolutely. <sighs> so because like the lessons from like our experiences, these stories that we were telling is like I look back on it and I'm like, okay, all these years later, if I was to go through that experience again. Um, I don't want to say again, if I was to have that experience for the first time now, I probably would have not necessarily upon arrival, but maybe as soon as we arrived and went in, I would have been like, I'm not, I'm not feeling this. Mm -hmm. And if I don't say anything before payment is made, probably soon after payment is made, I want to be like, listen, I'm really sorry, but I, I, I can't stay and I gotta go. And let me repay you if I can in this yeah. moment very soon to like mm-hmm. at least pay for my portion, you know, and, and get yeah. the fuck out. Yeah. Um, I probably would have been like, can we, can we, I know this is really like not cool or comfortable. Can we just get in the car? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, like um, uh. something like, you know, if we're still going to make this thing happen like let's find a, a space and a time and a place like you know that mm-hmm. that can bring this together in some way now to yeah. be fair i don't know how many of these type of establishments still exist it was a mom and pop it was not a, a, a professional quote it wasn't unquote. it wasn't one of the big name like bathhouses that we know well and even some of the independents can be mm-hmm. really well run like yeah, I've yeah. Been to some. yeah. um i've also yeah. been to some that are i don't want to say questionable but they're not exactly sketchy yeah, yeah, like I mean, they're kind of yeah. more seedy. Um, yeah, and yeah, I fair. will admit there is something alluring to that. Um, Agreed. A local Hi. establishment that has lots of local people. Some might say trade. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like that. That can be a thing, and there's not necessarily mm-hmm. anything wrong with it. But you know, I went to one of the not best, but one of the more interesting experiences I had at a bathhouse. Um, was at Man's Country in Chicago. Never Pretty heard. Pretty sure. Okay. If I think that's what it was. Okay. I think that's what it was called. The one, I, again, this is, gosh, almost 10, 15 years ago. Okay. Like I'm realizing. It's been a while. Um, maybe not that long. Anyway, it's been a while. Jim and I went, uh, we went to Chicago for uh, I think our fifth anniversary. So 13 years ago. There we go. Okay. Now I got it in my head. Um, and one of the places we went to was this, um, we found out about this bathhouse and it was, it's not Steamworks. It's not the club. It is, I'm pretty sure and internet or whoever, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm thinking this is the one that was owned by, um, Chuck Winslow, who also owned um, owns IML, or was one of the head creators of IML. Okay. Um, was it, it, it? It was older. It was a little rundown. Um, it had. It's. I'm fairly certain it's closed now. I'm pretty sure it's been closed for a while now. Okay. Um, but it was one of those ones where, like, kind of like kind of things you're talking about, where like, this is looking a little seedy and sketchy but it it was alluring and it had a lot of interesting features because it was if i'm again remember correctly it was built by someone that 
was gay and wanted to kind of have this right so people to have their experience oh the thing i loved the most was there was this like on one of the top floors there was this big ass room that was pretty much a, like almost like a, a a theater amphitheater um big screen probably a projection screen that they were playing you know stuff on and just i don't i mean i, I remember i feel like i'm remembering murals on walls it was just one of those like just weird like times like it was from a time when you know stuff like this was like the thing to do and um i loved it now did i have a great time no but um that was mostly due to just it we went i think on a thursday or friday it wasn't like a big night and it's one of the older ones so not a lot of people were going to it mm. you know you had the big ones so right there was a the crowd was very different and um, I had an experience with one guy that I was I, I was happy with, but everything else was kind of eh. But again, well, and that's like the place that I'm telling the story about just now. Um, the clientele <laughs> matched the venue. Yeah, for lack of a better like, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been the least bit surprised if there were people there that like may have not had a residence, um, that had addictions that they were dealing with mm, um mm. do you know what i mean like yeah and i'm not saying that it was you know a, a cesspool of you know humanity i'm just saying uh the the environment the lack of ability to see things yeah. really affects your perception and i say mm-hmm. this because it is you know halloween haunt season if you mm-hmm. have ever seen an environment in full daylight or with full lights Everything is very different. There have been several times I have arrived at a bar, at a campground, at a at a at a destination at night, and then to see it the next day when the sun is out, and you're like, "Oh, mm-hmm. this don't look anything like I thought." Like, mm-hmm. in fact, I I don't think I've ever had this experience with another person, but I'm sure some people have rolled over in the morning and been like, "Oh, ooh, um." This does not look like I recall last night. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard story in and of itself. Um, <laughs> woo. Woo. I agree. Like I've been to um I've been to bars during the day that look nothing like they look like at, at night, where they can kind of shade like lights and darken some spaces and it, it adds to the allure of the space, but going there during the day, you're like, oh, well, um, who's who, who who's taking care of that? Um. Well, it's like, so here's the next little example. I have been to some uh, adult bookstores, quote unquote, uh, porn stores. I have seen some of them that are very well taken care of, uh, been updated every now and then, are sanitized you know, taken, Mm -hmm. like, cleaned and that kind of stuff. So you feel better about the establishment. I have also been to ones where when the lights are on and it's not that dark, you're like... I was was laying in that. I was putting my feet in that. (laughs) I put my... (laughs) I I kneeled on that floor. God. I sucked dick through that, like, Uh that opening. Like, baby. (laughs) Baby. (laughs) Mm Mm-mm. Right, 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 right. Like, like that, that, that's a whole other story in and of itself. That is. I have to start. Like, that's one of the things I've thought about doing because it's been. I'm, I'm being dead serious. I've thought about like putting some like, like those like travel wipes in my like oh, yeah. play bag. Just be like, no. Um, this is not a product endorsement, baby. Uh, <laughs> hand sanitizer. Do not use it as lube. That's a horror story. No. Do not no. use. Never use sanitizer as lube. I don't. I, I'm not kink shaming. I'm not yucking a yum. But baby, like, like you need consent for that. Hello. Mm-hmm. Um, but please, yes, please, absolutely. Please. In today's day and age, like I would be the least bit surprised if someone at least had some hand sanitizer. But no, yeah. I agree with you. Like, if I was gonna go and hook up where there's glory holes or whatever, you know, adult videos and stuff, I probably would take like some. I don't have any with me. Um, individual packs 
or like a small mm-hmm. multi-pack, put it in my pocket because convenience, it's the technology of the day. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And wipe surfaces, things, um, just kind of <laughs> sanitize, yep. maybe not so yep. much clean. <laughs> yep. Gosh. Oh. So with that. Yes. Do we want to tell more stories or do we think we're good? Uh, I don't know. I mean, how are you feeling? I realize like, we're probably going to make this a, a really I, long episode or not. I so. think, I think, I think we're good. Okay. Um, I was, I had like, we, so Gary and I, cause we were, as we were preparing for this episode, um, we kind of had a conversation right before about like, what are stories you had? And I'm like, I did have a few. And I'm I'm talking about the few like horror ones that I have in my life, and I've had some that are not as bad. They they kind of fall along some of the similar lines, like lack of prep preparations, um, uh, you know the I don't want to. Well, I will cut like some of the catfishing slash like you don't look like your picture. Um, uh, oh gosh. Uh, other things, and if you go through some of the archives of things, um, there are stories that I have told that are that are out there. Um, I don't want to rehash. And that was the three. The t- three that came to mind was the one I just told, the one that I have. I know I've told on the show before, and then there's another one that is, uh it's horror in the sense that um, I'll put it like this: um, um, realize temperatures when you're doing things that involve getting wet okay do i need to tell this story kind of because i'm intrigued (laughs) i'm like 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 i I will say this uh i am one of those people that does not like to be cold and wet Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. like yeah camping is a problem for me like, because invariably, even if it's the middle of summer, quite potentially waking up in the morning, there may be dew on the ground, mm-hmm. on the tent, mm-hmm. the temperature has dropped, and yeah. typically I don't recover from being cold. I'm just one of those people. Like, once yeah. I get cold, it's like a bone-chilling cold, and it takes forever for me to warm up. Mm-hmm. And it just mm-hmm. gets more miserable and unpleasant if I'm wet. So, yeah. like... Okay. People, people who are you know into that kind of stuff, you know, or whatever. I'm like, mm, not, not for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, then we'll tell the story. So, hi. Um, <laughs> new story. Uh, I think this is a new one. I don't think I've told this story before. Maybe I have. I don't know. So, um, me and a guy, um, cute guy. He was he was bisexual and very much not like in the closet, but just was kind of discreet and what have you. But he was a very cute. Um, big bear of a man, um, but he was also very submissive. Like that was his thing. And I'm not always dominant, but when you are encountering someone that is that submissive, mm-hmm. like you immediately can take that role. So that's what we did. We were playing around, and we have talked again. Consent is a thing. Things we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, he was big on role play. And, um, his whole idea was being quote unquote forced, like not to the extreme, mm-hmm. but just like he's trapped and caught or what have you. And the only way to get out is to please the person that has captured him. So that okay. was kind of the roles that were being played okay. generalized to a larger audience effect. Okay. Um, so we're going at it. We're doing a lot of things. One of the things we had discussed was that he was very much into water sports. Okay. Um, so for those, you know, we have an episode somewhere where we're talking about water sports. I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, so I, I was cool with it as long as I'm the one doing <laughs> the giving the water as it were. Okay. Um, so we're we're playing around and we're doing stuff and we get at it and um I proceed to lead him to my bathroom. This was I was still in my apartment there. So okay. um lead him to the to the to the bathtub, get him in the bathtub, and proceed to like 
let a stream go. And he is loving it. I'm enjoying it because he's very much like he is he is a good like audible mm. like person. So he's making those nice little sounds like those whimpers and what have you that can kind of really get a dom going. Um and then I finish. So pre-start. Um this was maybe I want to say January, February. It was it was winter, fall, winter. It was winter, if I'm remembering correctly. It was cold. Um, my bathtub face is against a wall that is connected to the outside. So for the so, exterior wall, is it what, only one side of the bathtub? Yes. Or two sides? Oh, okay. And is yeah. it the long side? Yeah. Okay. So the bathtub, so bathtub, wall window like to the outside is it um, a, is it a enameled bathtub like metal yes. with it okay it's enamel yeah this is all important y'all because that means that bathtub is cold probably yeah. to begin with so again we're in the moment we're, we're, we're you know doing all stuff and we're role playing and going at it and, um and i proceed to pit go ahead oh wait go ahead no is he clothed unclothed unclothed okay. he is unclothed okay. he is naked <laughs> birthday suit baby okay yep and i'm naked and he's naked and okay. da, da, da. um and let release go ahead he's in the bathtub and as as soon as the moment has like passed and i've done the thing it hits him he is shivering <laughs> oh dear because he is cold because mm -hmm. the it was uh like i said exterior wall mm -hmm. it was cold um i don't know how well insulated this because this is an apartment i don't live there right, right, right. um uh i mean i live there but i don't i didn't build the house right, right. um and so he starts shivering and he's like um i'm, I'm i really am into this moment but i'm cold and he kind of like says that um through like shittering teeth and i'm like oh well shit well, I guess we're going to have to do something. So to warm him up, the only way to warm him up is to like try to turn on mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. faucets and get some water on him. Well, my apartment, my apartment I remember because I lived there, uh, it takes a little while for the water to warm up. Okay. So I, I tell him I need to stand up because this water is going to be cold for a little bit. Right. Before it warms up. And he's like, okay. So he's like, okay. And he's still, again, he's in the tub. And I honestly don't want him to get out of the tub because he's covered in piss. Right. And I have carpeted floors in my bathroom. I hated it so much. Right. Hated it. Hated it. But it was a thing. Right. So, right. So he kind of has to stay in the tub. <laughs> so out comes the water from the, shop, the bathtub. Fortunately, thank God I hadn't turned on the shower yet. Um, so the water's just like pouring in and it's cold and it's had his feet and you know, he's still shivering. He is shivering. I'm actually holding his hand and feeling like he's he's cold. But then finally, the water heats up enough. I think I had turned the heat like all the way on just because I needed it to get hot really right, quick. Right. And he proceeds to just like take a shower because right, right. at this point, like. <laughs> he's cold and you might normally be like could you not use so much hot water but at this moment you're probably like <laughs> scald your skin like do what you need yes, to please do what you need to do so he showers um he dries off because again he didn't want to be damp right, um, right, right. and um the moment was done you know the scene had kind of played itself out right um we played for a little bit afterwards because he was at my apartment for, I think for most of the evening and eventually left. But, um, uh, he, um, uh, we played and don't get me wrong. It was, it was one of those just like moments where reality sinks in to a role play situation. Mm -hmm. And that can be horrifying in and of itself. Um, <laughs> but we ended up having some good times. Um, yeah. Some very good times. He was he was again very playful, very submissive, a lot of fun. I've lost track of him because he had moved away um not too long after that. Not because of me, but just again, he had found a job and he was moving to I want to say Maine. 
at some point. But uh, yeah. So there's that. So the takeaway is <laughs> there's a lot of factors to be aware of. Again, another story of environment is important. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, like I, I can see where, you know, that can be a little unnerving and disconcerting to, to kind of play with somebody and then to have sort of the immediate results afterwards not be quite what you would expect or want. Mm-hmm. Um, I was gravely concerned as you were telling a story. I was like, OK, so is he going to just be one of those people that wants to put his clothes on without drying off and then go home? Because oh. oh. I was like, you're wet. Then you put your clothes on, then your clothes get damp, then you go outside, <laughs> it's winter. Like, I'd be like, mm-hmm. oh, mm, 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 mm. Like, so, so that's not my suit. I, I will <laughs> own, like, the original plan, no matter what, would have been a shower, would have been had. Mm. Like, <laughs> go you're wrong. I'm into water sports. I'm not, in, I'm not big into water sports, but I can do it if i need to you know if i if i if i desire to i should say right um and but i knew for a fact that he wasn't leaving that bathroom without some kind of cleansing right 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 (laughs) because again i didn't have i didn't have the i didn't have the things ready or really available to do things where someone is wet and you know covered in piss and going on to like another surface. Right, right, right. Like say a bed. No, and that you. and that's fair. That's why I was also asking earlier if he was dressed, because a part of me was like, if he is dressed and then like having a water sports moment and they're receiving and they want to be soaked in their clothes, like and then you're talking about it being winter, and I was like, Oh, this 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 could go bad. Like this could end up in pneumonia. <laughs> like this could, mm-hmm. like, this could this could kind of be, you know, not necessarily a good outcome. And that's why it's important to, like, hopefully think a little ahead about what is going to happen and who, what, where, yeah. when, and, and all that jazz. So, yeah, I'm happy to hear that you were a good host and you let them yes. take a shower and get, mm-hmm. like, not only cleaned up, but more importantly, have hot water, like, to mm-hmm. to take the chill off and stop yeah. the tea chattering and bone freezing. <laughs> yeah, it was so... Like when you're talking about yourself and like I don't like being damp and cold. And I was like, Yep, that was this guy. Mm. <laughs> like that was this guy. Cause it again, it immediately took him out. Like he was because he went from like again, I told you, the very submissive, whimpering, like, I'll do whatever you want kind of thing to like, holy fuck, like I'm freezing, please, whatever, like I need to do something. <laughs> right, right. No, and that makes sense. And that's bound to happen. Like we were talking in the beginning of this episode about consent and like you have like that ability at any moment to change, to pivot, to be like, nope, it's not happening for me anymore. I mean, and and it could be anything, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, you could have a memory that comes forward uh, that really distracts, um, changes your mindset, your mood. Um, There's nothing wrong with that. You know, Mm -hmm. please, uh, I say, don't be ashamed of that. But no. make sure you communicate and let your partner or partners, you know, whoever you're with, know, like, I, I need to step out. Mm-hmm. I need to remove myself. I need to not whatever, um, you know, and that, and that could be difficult, you know, and challenging, especially mm-hmm. if you have a vivid imagination and your mind starts going in a certain direction and you like see negative outcomes, you know, and it, and it really kind of distracts or makes things unpleasant for you. Um you know, that that can really compound the experience and, you know, make you want to change direction or something. So agree. Be, be aware of that kind of stuff. And, and I'm not saying that you have to be 100 percent open book and tell everybody what's going on. You could just simply say, I, I'm just not feeling comfortable, like, you know, mm-hmm. or this I'm no longer interested or I, I don't want yeah. to continue. By all means. And, you know, we've always like consented to things, big, big consented to things always <laughs> for me. Um. It, yeah, you and you can all like you said, you can always get out if you if something's going wrong or hell if you just are no longer interested, like um, up or you know like we said that 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 blood you know rushing changes and your mind clears right and you're like 
I don't want to be in this. I don't want to be doing this. And I especially don't want to be doing it with you. Like, you could... Right. Like, I mean, there are many factors that could change. And, and I hope that your takeaway from listening to us in these stories is like, you know, with Damon's first story and with mine, like you could, you can just stop. You can be like, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. Maybe I want to do it with you, but just not here. Like maybe another time, another place. Yeah. Um, those are options. Um, you know, and with the last, you know, story that you were telling Damon, uh, I think that's a nice example of how a person was like, Hey, like, in this moment, this has changed for me. And so mm -hmm. the sub communicates and says, like, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking cold. Right. Like, like, I, like I'm, I'm done for the moment. <laughs> Can we please, like, change yeah. this, you know, whatever it is? Um, yeah. And, and Hate to it, say it, kind of a yellow. It was kind of a yellow right. <laughs> moment for him. No pun I need to, like, yeah, I need to pause and readjust. Like, and I think those yeah. are those are key things to, to for folks. I hope that they take away is that, you know, while we did have these experiences and some of them are pretty harrowing or unnerving, um, you know, it is entertaining. But um, as I call it, it's edutainment. Like it's ed it's educational and entertaining. So my hope is that you realize, uh, you can have an experience and go through it. I don't know if I want to use the word survive, but. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can, you can be okay. All the parties can be okay. But more importantly, will you be okay with it after the fact without having some PTSD or, you know, things in which I highly endorse you go get therapy and, you know, talk through, work through, have a journey about whatever those items are. Because, you know, uh, sharing space and time with another person being intimate with them can be really a positive and rewarding experience. It can Agreed. really give you some, uh, very enjoyable, uh, you know, memories, but that takes work. It takes effort. It definitely takes communication and all of that, you know, is important. So where hope is, is that you don't have, uh, your own personal horror stories, but if you do, yeah, interested to learn more about that. Uh, and there's several ways you could do that. First, you can go to our blog at comesoutloud.com and you can comment on this particular uh, post when it goes up for show 622 horror stories. Uh, you could also just send us an email to comesoutloud at gmail.com and tell us a story. Or uh, if you have posted anything already on the internet, you could give us a link or something and we could check that out. Um, if you would like to leave us a voicemail with a story, uh, sexy or otherwise, you can call 361 C. Well, talk that's 361 265 8255. In terms of social media, you can pretty much find us in most places online. Uh, typing in the word comes out loud as one word. Um, and if you want to subscribe uh, to us here on YouTube, you can do that as well to be notified and see the shows when they come up. If you would like to be a part of the entourage for our chat uh, group it's on telegram as a platform which is kind of like facebook messenger uh but a little bit more secure and not tied into that whole uh infrastructure um you can go to tinyurl.com slash telegram that's t-e-l-e-g-r-a-m dash c-o-l to have the direct link to join you can also know when we're uh, expecting typically to record our live shows uh, that will stream. You can go to tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col uh, to know about that. If it's a pre-record uh, non-airing show, it won't be on the calendar um, necessarily. So because uh, it's, you know, we have our own calendar just as host as to what we're mm -hmm. doing. But if you are interested uh, to join us for a live show, you can actually live chat with us via YouTube when we do that. And if you would like to support Cubs Out Loud, there's several ways to do that. You can go to zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud and get some merchandise. There's a couple of items of option over there. So Damon happens to be wearing our Consent is My Foreplay uh, shirt in a lovely uh, kind of dark forest olive green color um, that has the Bear Pride uh, colors on it. I happen to be wearing uh, my lovely um, embroidered Cubs Out Loud uh, distressed hat, which is kind of in a um, ash gray and then i have the new what we call version three uh logo uh on a tee that i got earlier this year but we have other items in addition to apparel um we've got housewares uh like damon has an example of our coffee mug as uh, jeff is a big fan of i think it's the chili mug uh, but there's also a soup mug i mean we got we got all sorts of stuff over there you're welcome to get uh you also can go uh to support one of our favorite artists smashy 
Um, he has a shop at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear, where he has different uh, designs. And the reason why we talk about that is because the shirt that Damon's wearing right now, that uh, actually was designed by smashy. So um, we thank him very much for doing that. He has some other cool stuff. And I've actually got, I think, about three of his shirts from Tee Public mm. uh, over the past year or two in my closet. So uh, if you would like to, you could become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud for as uh, small as a dollar or more a month. You can get um, bonus uh, content access. Uh, we have what we call the bookends. So the pre-show, the post-show um, are those episodes over there that you can get them in audio format. There's also a YouTube of the full show there as well, as opposed to what goes out to the public. So it kind of has some of our outtakes, those type of things. Um, included with it along with some other items you can also if you want to you can just give us some money we'll gladly take you know a, a one-time in-kind donation you can go to paypal.me slash cubs out loud uh, to do that and we will put that towards our ongoing costs uh, from hosting and domain to computer equipment upgrade those kind of things in fact i think we're going to get a new piece of equipment for jeff real soon um not a real costly one but uh just something that i realized i communicated with it was like maybe we should think about this uh to promote cubs out loud if you are interested you could rate us you can go to itunes we would like five stars thank you very much uh <laughs> and leave a comment on there you can also pretty much subscribe anywhere uh that podcasts are available online um we have an rss feed for uh, cubs out loud as audio only um so you can just listen to it while you're in your travels or working those type of things that's how i actually learned of the podcast many years ago before joining it um, was just, you know, kind of back in the old days when we were uh, oral for the ears <laughs> only, so to speak, as opposed to oral. Anyways, oh. <laughs> with that said, David, if people want to get in touch with you, where would they find you? Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me on um, most bear sites and Facebook as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Um, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on um, Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work, though. Good to know. If you would like to get in touch with me, you pretty much find me anywhere online as garebear 73 xxx uh, And with that, we're going to end the show here. Uh, if you want to uh, see Jeff, just stick around. He'll be back. Probably mm -hmm. in the very next show <laughs> mm -hmm. we record it. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, and we want to thank everyone for kind of bearing with us uh, due to today's unexpected uh, changes and the change in schedule uh, because of different things that are happening. But um, we'll be back live rather soon uh, here. So until mm -hmm. then, we'll see you later. Bye, everybody.